at midday. Uh, first, though, we are lucky enough today, it's a real treat for all of us and all of you watching at home, to have some incredible personal items belonging to the late, great Freddie Mercury in the studio. So we've dubbed today... Freddie yeah, Friday. Freddie Friday, Freddie Friday. Uh, so we're continuing to celebrate all things Freddie Mercury with two people that knew him personally. We're joined by broadcaster and close friend of Freddie's, Paul Gambaccini, alongside Freddie's longtime personal assistant, Peter Freestone. A very, very good morning to you both. And I, I just come up to you there and I said, what's it like looking at some of this memorabilia? And you, you said every single piece of it. It's got a story. Is it I mean, just so nostalgic looking at all yeah, that? Yeah, I mean... I was around these pieces for 12 years, but that was 32 years ago. 32? You don't look old enough. I, 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 was, I, was, I was a child. Oh, wait, oh OK, OK. <laughs> no, um, you just, I just look at these things and I can see exactly where they were. Lovely. Right. But Lovely. notice also the exquisite taste and detail. This is the mind of an artist. Yeah. This is a fellow who knew quality and wanted it and shared it with friends such as Peter. And, and Paul, uh, you knew Freddie and you were always quite surprised at what a showman he was. Was he like two different people? Definitely. Uh, on stage, he was one of the greatest show persons of all time, showing the influence on him of Shirley Bassey, Liza Minnelli. The classics, you know. <laughs> he, 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 because... He usually was not with an instrument. He was with his arms. And he studied gesture. And, of course, Shirley Bassey is the greatest for gesture, and Liza Minnelli as well. And so he managed to combine gesture with movement, uh, uh, notice the trainers, <laughs> and, uh, all, and also, uh, of course, that incredible voice. Uh, so he was this incredible... Amazingly charismatic showman, but personally, and we both agree, among the kindest human beings we've ever known. Oh, Isn't that nice. lovely yeah. to hear, Peter? I mean, you worked um, with him for how long? 12, 12 years. years. So you saw him on good days and bad days. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the thing but, is. But always kind? Always yes, a nice fellow, very in relatable? Fact, yeah. In fact, yeah. Um, there were some times when, yes, he shouted and screamed at me, but I knew it wasn't at me. It was just him having to get, get something out of his system. Um, he, as soon as it was done, he would go totally quiet and then, sorry, and go off and play Scrabble or something, you know? Um, You're not was... the first person to mention Scrabble, actually, because Giles <laughs> was talking about it earlier, actually. So beyond the yeah. stage life, a very normal he, life he you, If people, people would not believe if they sort of were a fly on the wall watching Freddie at home, because everybody expects this amazing... Do you being... remember he liked Mop and Lucia? Yes. Yes, it's a TV show. Yes. And he loved it. He loved Anna Massey's yes. uh, performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was, he was a human being. He was... So just describe, describe, like, a normal day when he's not performing. Uh, well, like, what kind of things would he get up to? Nine o'clock in the morning. Doesn't matter if he went to bed at two in the morning or six in the morning, at nine o'clock there had to be a cup of Earl Grey tea with milk and two sugars by the side of his bed. <laughs> um, he would be down for breakfast within half an hour. I mean, breakfast was always the same. A couple of slices of toast, some marmalade jam, more tea. Um, then he would decide what he wanted to do. Um, he could just go into the garden feed the koi carp in the pond. He loved doing that, just putting the granules in his hand, putting it down at the water, and they would just come and eat out of his hand. But, OK, maybe he wanted to go to the auction because so much of what he had was bought at auction. But I would get the catalogue, he would look through it, mark down 20 pieces. Then we go beforehand to look and we see, OK, 20 down to five, and then that's fine. We go, we'll go and see this. We'll have a little bit of lunch, usually at <gasps> Rishu. It doesn't exist anymore in South Audley Street. <laughs> um, and then back home. Um, it's a simple life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He loved shopping. He loved shopping, but never went into a supermarket. OK. <laughs> Why? It would be Cartier or Lalique yeah. or whatever.
Nice. <laughs> I love um, the middle aisle analogy, though, wouldn't he? Come on. He loved the middle aisle and Aldi a little. Let's we all do. We all do. Um, Paul, can we talk about a pivotal moment in, in Freddie's career? That Live Aid concert. I mean, mm -hmm. and there's a big story behind that, isn't there? Well, uh, he was told not to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's why doctor's orders don't do it. Yeah. Which is why, if you look on YouTube and you see me interviewing Brian and Roger, they presented as Queen that day. This was the first he was time quiet. because he yeah. was quiet. And, but they had been so professional, they'd rehearsed at the Shaw Theatre. Yes. On Euston Road. Three days. So they got their set down to the 20 minutes. Now remember, this was well-timed down to the last second because they had to switch back and forth with Philadelphia. And Queen were the most professional of all the acts. They timed it. They were probably the and, only act that rehearsed. Yes, that's right. That's right. So uh, it's not spontaneous when they break from one number into another. But nonetheless, Freddie, being this incredible showman, took risks. There's no guarantee that that pas de deux with the cameraman was going yeah. to work. Uh, there was no guarantee that that yeah. was going to uh, yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, iconic yeah. you know, moment. Yeah, you know, just and think he wasn't if... well at that point. No, he, no, he no, had... He um, there was something wrong with the throat. Yeah. And uh, he, he re took this risk. Imagine if no one had picked up on the AO, yeah. yeah, it would have been an embarrassment. Yeah, but he had the crowd in his hand. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, he always also, did, yes. with that, with Live Aid, was the first time he ever saw, because it was in daylight, mm. the first time he ever saw the crowd reaction to Radio Gaga. Wow. Because had everybody, was, and everybody in the audience, he could not believe what he saw. At that moment, I thought, thank heaven, Freddie is a good person because if he had that power over people and was a nasty man, mm -hmm. we could have had some but bad things. But this is what made him yeah. decide never to talk about politics or religion publicly because everybody should make up their own minds sure. on those. But he could say something and so many people would just, yes. It was one of the greatest feelings of my life, I just have to say this, because yeah. I was uh, backstage doing the interviews, watching the monitor, and I felt the frisson, the artists' community backstage. They're stealing the show. Everybody <laughs> felt the same thing. Yeah. They're stealing the show. Yeah. And yeah. the next day, the BBC took a poll. Who was the best? Over 50% said Queen. Now, today, you can't even get 50% agreement on when to get up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, really. you know, but really. with all of those stars, yeah. over 50% of the audience thought Queen were the best. He took the risk. They took the risks. And it worked. Who came on after Queen? Can you imagine that? That day, um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Was it? Wasn't you too? Was it? No, because they would not switch to Philadelphia. Because that's a tough gig. That is a tough <laughs> gig. I can't remember. Um, yeah. It's it's a little bit ago. Peter, we're looking at a little collection you have alongside you there. Um, mm. These yes. are things that Freddie gave to you. Um, sort of. But they're Freddies. This Freddie gave to me. These Freddie gave to me. But this is something very. For me, it's very special. Um, Someone bought this in auction. Um, it's the invitation for the playback of A Day at the Races, but it's for David Mins. Well, what, do you want to get hold it up to camera one there so everyone at home can see that? But then, that's fine. But on the other side, it's doodles that oh Freddie did. God. He did that? This is Freddie that's with really You Take My Breath Away. Oh, oh that is lovely. wonderful. Lovely. Because he wrote that song for David Mins. Yes. Um, and the these... glass are very important. Oh, I mean, oh are... yes, 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 yes. These, in the day when we were living in New York, there were bars that you could only have beer and soft drinks. You could only buy. But Freddie could not go out without his vodka. So, Freddie had this one and I had the backup. <laughs> and we, so he would have orange juice. <laughs> That and this actually Freddie did give. Um, it was actually something that he gave so many people. One of his gifts of choice was an antique kimono. He bought Gorgeous. hundreds of them and just gave them all away. But if you look, I mean, it's it is a piece of art. It is, yeah, and. If, when, if people go to see this 
collection in Sotheby's, you will see how everything comes from an artist's point of view. You look at everything. And while it might not have bear, one thing might not bear any resemblance to the next, you can see where it's come from. Yeah. An wonderful. artist through and through. Uh, An artist wonderful. through and through. Thank oh, he you. was amazing. Oh, thank you thank for sharing you. your story. Thank you so, so much, much for joining us. Really enjoyed that. Can I just that. say as well, Paul, your voice, it's the voice of my youth. It's the same. And radio of <laughs> it's my exactly youth. And the it's same. still wonderful. And <laughs> yourself, you're a radio icon and you've thank been you. wonderful all your career. You've been great. Well, so uh, pleasure. Good to have you here with us today. And now thank TV. So. You're now on test. <laughs> Don't get into that telly rubbish. Stick with the radio. Trust me. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Cheers. Yeah, well. Good to see you all. A little bit later on, Dan Hatfield's going to be here and he's going to value your music memorabilia. So that's really exciting. Too. And still to come, Dr.